Hi there, Dominic the CX guy. Nice to see you again, or welcome to the channel. Another day, another video in the customer service experience, customer service and universe or customer experience, however you want to call it, uh, there, it has many faces. Today, we're going to be discussing, continuing our discussion about setting up Zenus from scratch and specific, specifically uh, the first bit, which is about collecting data to have a fruitful setup. Okay, so if you haven't watched my previous video, go ahead and see it. It's from yesterday, and I rolled out the plan, which I follow usually from setting up Zenus from scratch. And I invite you to, to, to have a look and see how that can play out. And today I'm continuing that discussion, which is the um, second video of a long list of videos about Zenus setup. So before we begin, a quick intro. My name is Dominic. I am a Zendes consultant. I've been one for the past eight years. I've been a Zendes partner for the past two years. I have been subcontracted by Zendesk to work on um, Zendesk setups or onboardings. And I finished that collaboration about, uh, I think a month ago. And uh, now I'm doing these videos to share some of the experience that I've, uh, I've gained. And uh, well, also to build a YouTube presence as the personal goal of mine. I am hoping with these videos to make, uh, yeah, to give back something to the community for people to set up their Zendesk and to learn something new. This is also um, a way for me to cement the information in my in my skill set because obviously when you talk about things uh, and you make it official in a video, <laughs> you, uh, yeah, it, it gets cemented in your uh, in your brain, I guess, and also. I am also open for projects. So if you are in any way, maybe not having the time to watch all my videos and do a setup from scratch, which is um, a proven methodology uh, that comes from directly from Zenas, then you can hire a professional to do it for you, which I am one of those professionals. Hi. <laughs> okay, so um, the way that this works is I usually talk about, first I do this intro and then I continue my discussion about, um, about what I'm covering during that uh, during that video, and I share my screen and I go over, I show you exactly what I do in depth. So yeah, you have a better understanding. Uh, usually, I cover like the aging experience, I cover the uh, admin experience, how to create things in Zendesk, and then yeah, the experience of the end user. Today, we're going to be discussing again how to set Zendesk for, up from scratch. And uh, yeah, I'm going to share my screen to show you exactly what we're doing, to, what we're covering today, which is business requirements from clients. So also known as the homework that needs to be done by the client, by you, in order to have a successful uh, implementation. So the first thing that we have to do is understand why we're doing what we're doing, right? Because it's easy to set up something. It's the easiest thing in the world. You can just read one article from Zendesk. <laughs> Apologies, and then you can just uh, yeah go ahead and implement that. But without understanding the whole thing, then you might um, you might be setting up something which impacts your further decisions, like the decisions that you'll make in the future and uh, things that you need to add inside Zendesk into the future. And if you're not mindful of these things, then you're setting yourself up to well uh, make things ta entangled and um, yeah not necessarily the best way. Before we begin, please consider subscribing. I, that would be mean very much to me. And uh, if you want to see some special content, go ahead and uh, yeah, comment down below. I'd be happy to yeah respond to your requests and maybe even make a video out of some of your requests. So uh, okay, so in continuing the discussion about homework, um, what I want to do <clears throat> in the first part of the homework is to collect business requirements. So let me share my screen, show you what I have in mind. All right, let me hide these things from Zoom. Okay, now the first thing that you see right now should be, um, it's on my website. This is a services part of my website. So the second service I provide is Zena Setup or onboarding. And I go here and I list my process. And so today, uh, we're going to only be covering the business requirements, which uh, is a document that I will walk you through on what I need exactly. And uh, yeah, again, yesterday's video covers all of this uh, process in a little bit more detail. I'm going to do a video for everything in this uh, in these bullet points and uh, yeah, number list, because yeah, some of them take longer, some of them take less time. 
<clears throat> now, the start of everything is the business requirements. So details about a project scope and objective. So first, uh, first things first, that before we start, we need to collect your business requirements. This is something that you have to do. I normally don't want to influence you on these because um, whatever comes to mind or whatever you have decided with your internally with your team is something which I needed needed to need to be reflected in this uh, document that I will be going over. So I have this document which I share usually at the beginning of a project. This is useful um, when you're starting from scratch, but it's also useful when you're um, when you're doing a Zendesk setup like or or a Zendesk optimization project. Um, it works uh, fine in either situation. So what I need from you is uh, I don't need, necessarily need like uh, you to I don't know just uh, go overboard and yeah bring me a very detailed SWOT analysis. I don't need that. I just need you to do this exercise on what you need from from me. And uh, yeah, this is also a way to align with your business and understand why you're doing some some of the things that you're doing and why you're requesting them from me. This is also a way for you to keep me accountable and I also keep you accountable. But mostly it's it's to your benefit because you get to keep me accountable. Like, hey, are we achieving these goals? And we always roll back to these and see if we're doing it right. Right. So at the beginning, at the beginning, we do this. At the end of the project, if you're not happy, you can just go back and see, like, hey, did we reach all of these business goals that we that we set out to do them to do? If not, why? And if uh, if they have not been reached, then uh, let's roll back and uh, yeah, see what our commitment was about. And then yeah, uh, that leaves me no choice but to do exactly what I said I would or exactly what I agreed to. So uh, summary statements. So the executive summaries um, summarizes the entire document. So outlining the need for the project. It, uh, its requirements and how it ties up to your overall business goal. All right, so best uh, time to formulate a summary statement is once the BRD is written completely, right? So this is something which you need to do on your end. So this is going to be assigned to you and you have to write in here that uh, summary statement. Then the project scope, which is um, it draws boundaries of the project and it helps um, managers decide what is included in the project and what isn't okay so having a clear scope helps keep the team aligned and various unnecessary wastage of resources so this is very important to keep in mind when you are clear on the outcome of a project you are better able to describe it in your requirements document right so this is again something which you need to decide on your end and then uh, let me know here this in turn helps uh, stakeholders understand the project details in a granular manner all project functionality or special requests need to be included here. Right. So what next thing on our list is going to be project goals and, obje and objectives. Uh, this, this section describes a high level goal and objective of the project. What will the project ultimately achieve? So why are we doing this again? Why, why? Who is it for, right? How does this um, project goal tie up to the overall business objective and mission? To make this process easier, use SMART goals for your requirement, requirement documents. The goal should be specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time frame. Very precise. Then need statement. The need statement outlines why the project is needed for the business and how the project will be able to meet the needs. Okay. Having a need statement in your document helps convey the importance of the project and how it will impact the company's bottom line in the long run. So we don't just do things right now because there's a fire burning. We do things with perspective and we do things uh, meaning. We do things um, in a meaningful way and with uh, and being mindful at the same time about what it impacts. What it in, what does it impact in a year from now or two years from now or five years from now? Identify stakeholders. So we need to, um, wait a second, what did we do the, oh, project requirements. Next step is to gathering requirements and uh, documenting them. Know what needs to be built and what is required to build, to build it. Describe personal requirements, budget, and other key resources needed to implement the project without any hiccups. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing, um, there's nothing that I dislike more than doing unproductive work. And I think I speak on everyone's behalf when I say that I, I like to do things once and I like to do them well. 
So understand why we're doing something and then how we're going to do it. It's just uh, some details that fall into place after having understood why. And identifying stakeholders. So um, assign roles and responsibilities amongst your team and obviously amongst, uh, amongst my team. This is also the space to assign tasks to remove any sort of confusion and ambiguity. ambiguity. Uh, okay, and then uh, SWOT analysis, so strengths, weaknesses, a flawless business requirement document, BRD, should <clears throat> contain a SWOT analysis of the project and how it fits in, in its big picture, right? So we have to see things in a week from now, a month from now, three months, and also a year and three, five years uh, in advance, right? So if you don't do that, I would like you to, I would like to steer you into that direction because I, there's uh, nothing more unproductive, nothing more dislikable than working on something and then having to redo it because we didn't define these goals well from the start point. So from the starting point. So yeah. The analysis should carefully articulate the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats that the project has. Project limitations, if there aren't any, if there are any, specify the limitations of the project in the section of the team working on the project should be made aware of the possible obstacles they might face in the future while executing the project or any important limitations for the project that the project might have. And obviously the schedule, timeline and deadlines. So each phase um, of the project is covered in detail in the section. So this helps uh, to ensure that all stakeholders are aware of what is required and when it will be required. Right, so this is the uh, first thing that um, I recommend uh, we start with. I kind of don't necessarily move on unless I have this thing laid out. Again, it's a way for you to have accountability with me and see if we are, and for me to see if I am achieving the goals that I have agreed to, right? Because I don't just want to, <clears throat> I don't just want to take people's money. Um, I want to have impact with my job and my work, and I want people to benefit from the customer, from the customer experiences that I create, that I help create, obviously, because I don't do it by myself. So even if it's a very, very tiny bit of impact, then I've, I've done my job well. That impact can be just uh, having someone's day a little bit made a little bit better in an ever crowded and, and, and uh, busy uh, uh, internet environment where there's a ton of information and in the customer service sphere if you made it if you make it easy for customers for your customers for anyone to find something that they're looking for and it's very stressful because i've been myself there find something <clears throat> that there an answer to your question and then you're happy and it's like oh man this just lifts me up and it's like oh fuck finally found the answer to what i was looking for and if i make it accessible and easy and that gives a little bit meaning to my job. So I hope this made sense. This is the first lesson of many, um, a, bit, a bit of a shorter one. I'm happy, I'm sure that <clears throat> this is <laughs> to everyone's benefit. Um, yeah, so I'll see you tomorrow in the next lesson, which uh, most likely we will be covering use cases or business flows. So see you tomorrow, bye.